Hi, my name is Marcin Gil. I'm working for Cloudfero and I will show you how to create a Linux virtual machine and access it from Windows desktop. First, I need to go to Crodius uh, EU, which is the portal of Crodius. and login. After being logged in, I can access OpenStack dashboard in which I will create the virtual machine. So I choose your cloud environment. Here I can choose either OpenID Connect or Keystone Credentials. If I choose Keystone Credentials, I need to enter my domain uh, domain name, username and password. And if I choose Open ID Connect and click Connect, I will be redirected to the page uh, using SSO. Uh, on the overview page, I can see the limits of my project. That is the number of instances I can create number of vCPUs, maximum, maximum RAM, maximum number of floating IPs, etc. On the left side, on the left top, uh, there is a menu which I can use to change the project. Uh, and if I open this menu, I can see that there are several projects in my domain. In your case, if you register, you will see the first two projects but later you can create your own projects. So now I will go to instances. And click launch instance. I will name the instance the test go to source in source i can choose the way the machine will be booted so i have several uh, options volume snapshot image instance snapshot and volume i will choose image uh, now i can choose from various images predefined images and in this tutorial, I will use Ubuntu 18. So I click on the arrow up. Uh, now I can also change the option create new volume. By default, it is uh, marked as no. If I want to create bigger image, bigger uh, system disk than is predefined in the flavor, I can choose yes and then define the bigger image, uh, the bigger system disk. In our case, I will choose no at this, in this tutorial, and now choose the flavor. I can also click on next, which will move me to flavor. In flavor, I can see available uh, options of various flavors. Uh, in case of Ubuntu, it can be the small one. So just one vCPU and one gigabyte of RAM. So I will choose this one. And next I will go to configure networks. If I want to have access to your data, so uh, satellite repository, 
I need to choose the EO data. And uh, in this project, I have two uh, external private network uh, private networks. One is external to, and uh, another is external free. Uh, currently, the new users will only have option of external free because the number of floating IPs used in external to has already expired. So in my case, I will also choose external free. Uh, network ports, uh, you don't need to configure anything. Security group, uh, you should add allow ping SSH RDP because this will allow you to access uh, the virtual machine using SSH. And now I go to Keeper. I can see there is no uh, Keeper created. I can either import Keeper and create it, uh, uh, that is the uh, import, uh, the uh, public key that I would create in uh, my console, uh, that is terminal uh, console. However, in this tutorial, I will use the option create Keeper in this uh, dashboard. So click on create Keeper. I will give it a name test and click on keeper create keeper now I need to uh, copy the private key to my desktop uh, because public key will stay uh, in my project and it will be inserted in in the virtual machine but private key will be used to connect using SSH. So I click on copy private key to clipboard and choose uh, some notepad that is a simple editor, paste it to the editor and save the file somewhere on my disk. It can be in documents. I will call it key and save. This key, private key, uh, has to be converted because we are, because this is in uh, a Linux standard. So in a moment I will show you how to convert the key. Now I can close the notepad and uh, click on done. As you can see the key has been created already and you can later use this key in cre while creating other uh, virtual machines. And now I click on launch instance. The instance is being created. It will take a moment. And now uh, I need to add the floating IP, which will allow me to access the, uh, the um, server from the instance from the outside world. Uh, I will show you how it looks in network topology at the moment without floating IP attached. As you can see, the our, uh, our instance is attached to your data and to private network and through the router uh, is available from external world. However, we still need to add the floating IP to the, uh, to the instance. So I go to instances again, and from the right in this menu, 
I choose associate floating IP. There is no floating IP at the moment allocated to the project, so I click on plus, choose the uh, private network. Uh, we will we are using external free, so I choose external free and allocate IP. Now the IP has been allocated and we still need to, act, to add it to the port of, uh, we need to select the port. Please do not select uh, your data port, but the port connected to private network. Associate, I click on associate. And now the IP is already added. You can also access the, uh, uh, the virtual machine from the console in the browser by clicking here, console. Uh, this console is uh, very simple, so uh, you do not have the ability to copy and paste, but if you want uh, to access it, you will need to log in as your console. You need to add a password. and enter it again and now you can use uh, the some basic features of uh, of um, this user this user is pseudo user so you can also uh, uh, have root access and you can see your data as well so for instance if i CD your data. I can ls the uh, satellite products, but uh, we will be using uh, another way. So I will show you how to access it from uh, console of uh, Windows. So again, I'm going to instances I will copy this address and we will be using uh, to connect to uh, to the uh, uh, Ubuntu server we will be using the application called putty I have already installed putty but you can do it from the Microsoft uh, uh, store. If you search for putty, uh, you should uh, uh, install this putty unofficial because this is uh, the open source one. So uh, you can do it from the store. I already have it installed, so I will omit this step. And uh, as you can see, the putty is installed already. And uh, first, uh, before using putty, we need to uh, uh, change the key to the format which is acceptable by putty, because the the key private key which we saved on the disk is not uh, compatible with putty. So we use we will use to this uh, putty key generator. So I click on putty key generator. Uh, now I need to load the key from the place where I saved it. So load. Choose it from I saved it in documents, and the key is. Uh, 
in my case it was without any extension so I uh, or just text document so I uh, choose this one and open and uh, the message shows that it was already uh, successfully imported so I click OK and now I need to save private key uh, click yes I will save it as key but without any extension it will add a ppk extension which will be understandable by a putty so i click save and close putty key generator now i will copy again the uh, the floating ip and uh, choose putty i will put here the uh, address of the um, of the instance and in SSH click on SSH and plus auth and here I need to uh, show putty where the key is located so I use browse in documents it already recognizes the uh, as uh, put the private key so I choose this one and open and in SSH I need to use the um, I need to use the uh, I forgot where is the place where I put the username just a moment Okay, never mind, I will just click open now. Uh, it uh, gives me some alert, but uh, I can just confirm yes. And it asks me about the user. In case of SSH, you uh, will be logged in as, not as EO console, but as EO user. So I put in EO user and click enter and now I'm already logged in to the server and I'm as EO user test and uh, again I can go to uh, EO data oh sorry CD EO data enter and ls AL. It shows me various uh, uh, all the uh, repositories, so I can go deeper. For instance, Sentinel Sentinel One, NLS, and CD SAR, and LS. So step by step, I can go to uh, deeper into the catalogs. So this is uh, all concerning accessing this uh, uh, this instance from Windows. Thank you very much for your attention and please visit our documentation on Crodias to look for some more information.